It's a great pleasure and honour to give this webinar for the European Respiratory Society to celebrate World No Tobacco Day, the theme of which is nicotine, youth and tobacco industry interference. I'm Professor Andy Bush. I'm a paediatrician from London. The aims of this presentation are firstly to review the effects of nicotine on the health of children and young people and the important consequences of nicotine addiction. I will discuss the acute toxicity of e-cigarettes and how importantly this differs from the effects of tobacco. I will summarise what is known about the long-term toxicity of e-cigarettes and the ongoing concerns of the paediatric community. I will highlight the absolute importance of a strategy to protect children and young people from physical abuse by the industry and the absolute importance of a current ERS position. So protecting children and young people. My first proposition is that nicotine is of itself a dangerous chemical. This is a pregnant woman and what are the effects of cigarettes on her fetus? I'm going to summarise a lot of data quickly and there's a lot more that I don't have time to, su to summarise. Firstly, nicotine of itself in this baboon model causes emphysema in the baboon pups if given to the pregnant mother. In this study, lung collagen deposition is increased by nicotine. MUC5AC expression is increased by nicotine. There is dyssynaptic airway growth and airway hyperresponsiveness without inflammation. The airways are longer than normal. All of these are pure nicotine effects. But what else do e-cigarettes contain? It's not just nicotine, potent chemical though that is. In this study, 122 of the most popular EU brands were analysed by, by liquid chromatography mass spectrometry. 246 different flavours and additives were detected. All 122 brands contained additives classified as risky or dangerous on the globally harmonised classification scheme. Other than nicotine, only ingredients not posing a risk to human health should be used, so says the EU, and this is a flagrant and direct flouting of EU regulations. And these are some of the chemicals that have been detected. And I, for one, am not keen to have them inhaled into my lungs. I hope I've shown you some of the data that nicotine is dangerous. There's plenty more where that came from, but we don't have time. But my next proposition is that e-cigarettes have worse acute toxicity than tobacco cigarettes. This is the Jeff Drazen Horror Show from the New England Journal of Medicine. Blast and burn injuries acutely when e-cigarettes went wrong. What about e-valley, e-cigarette or vaping product use associated lung injury? By January 2020, nearly 3,000 patients and 60 deaths had been reported. And you can see the data here. You can see the rapidly expanding numbers of E-Valley patients. The apparent tailing off at the end of the graph on the right is likely the reporting lag. And of course, more than 80% of these were related to cutting the e-cigarettes with cannabinoids. But importantly, 13% only used nicotine containing products. They did not cut the liquid. And the case in Nottingham with which I was involved was definitely due to a commercially bought product and not cut with cannabis. I would ask anyway, is it good public health sense to have hardware circulating in the community that can be tampered with to such lethal effect? And this acute toxicity is not seen with tobacco use. There is no such thing as that acute injury with tobacco. And I'd ask you to bear that in mind when we come to the chronic toxicity. The spectrum of e valley is enormous. Multiple lung diseases, it's not just one condition caused by likely one toxin, but likely multiple toxins are implicated. I wouldn't try to read this chart in great detail, there are about 10 or 15 different e-valleys, likely all caused by different things. Cannabinoids are not always in play. Some of these are just with the chemicals themselves. I would put to you that the liquids and the devices are dangerous. And as a practice point for all of us, 
If we see somebody with a funny respiratory illness, the question should be asked, could this be due to e-cigarettes? And I'm ending this section with this picture taken from recently from thorax. You can see the incredible lung destruction, air leaks, um, ground glass shadowing. This is an acute lung injury from e-cigarette use. So I hope I've proved to you that e-cigarettes have worse acute toxicity than tobacco. And I'm also going to say that there, this follows that e-cigarettes are not a watered down milk and water version of tobacco. They have their own toxicity. So this, in this study, this was uh, research bronchoscopies with bronchoalveolar lavage and brushings were done on smokers, vapors, controls, and there were some murine studies. 300 proteins were differentially expressed in smokers and vapors, of which 113 of these proteins were only expressed in vapors, not in smokers. And they showed in the wet lab studies that these liquids entered cells and affected membrane fluidity and protein diffusion. In this volcano plot, you can see proteins that were upregulated or downregulated. The red are smokers, the black are vapors. You can see, of course, there is overlap, but you can also see there are marked differences between smokers and vapors. And in this panel, you can see you can see in the red, uh, the red ellipses, those are upregulated proteins. The blue ellipses, those are downregulated pro um, proteins. And you can see that there is overlap between smoking and vaping, and the proteins are up and down regulated. But vapors have their own particular toxicity that is not shared with smokers. And of course, the converse is true. So another study now, induced sputum in smokers, vapors, and normal, and these investigators did quantitative proteomics. They showed that there was increased oxidative stress with e-cigarettes, increased elastase and matrix metalloproteinases, increased neutrophil and net associated proteins, and changes in mucus composition. And peripheral neutrophils showed increased netosis in e-cigarette uses. And this is an interactome uh, uh, pathways. You can see the green of those in, in, implicated in e-cigarettes. The red pathways are in tobacco and the E in both. And you can see, although there is overlap in toxicity, e-cigarettes have their own toxicity that is not shared by tobacco. And we have seen proof of that with e valley the acute lung injury with e-cigarettes. So the next question is, what about the long term toxicity of e-cigarettes? And I will put it to you that it is unknown. This is the late, very great Sir Richard Dahl. And this is lung cancer. It took many decades before Sir Richard Dahl showed that smoking caused lung cancer and many years before everyone was convinced by his findings. And during that time, the tobacco industry did its best to save its skin by suppressing data, obfuscation, and sowing confusion. These are the people who are now manufacturing vapes. We are still making new discoveries years after Sir Richard's death about the adverse effects of tobacco. We know that e-cigarettes have more short-term toxicity than tobacco. Can we be happy that they have less long-term toxicity? Can we be reassuring about the safety of e-cigarettes long term? I would suggest to you that we cannot. The next question is the industry is winning the social media war, and this is really critical where young people are concerned. I owe this slide to, to Professor Tom Ferkel, and these are ways that, that e-cigarettes are marketed. This does not look to me like somebody marketing a product for smoking cessation. The advertising themes are similar to cigarette advertising, focused on freedom, rebellion, glamour. They've been marketed with a variety of uns unsubstantiated health and cessation messages. They're advertised in many parts of the world on radio and television. And social media has become a prominent conduit for marketing and advertisement and acquiring these products, things like YouTube and Facebook. 
But what about social media? This is Instagram posts. And this is a study that looked at nearly a quarter of a million posts over four years. Vaping hashtags were used 100,000 times more commonly than FDA warnings. And indeed, when the FDA put out warnings, the, the effect was that there were three times more likes and six times more posts with more than 100 likes about vapes. Pods, which give you jewels, which give you a nicotine surge, are very often talked about. And you can see here the, the sort of things that are being talked about. The bigger the circle, the more the, the more their posts are. And you can see if they're things like promotions, flavors, user experiences, devices. Those of you with very sharp eyes will see a tiny yellow circle in the middle of that. That's the real cost of vaping. 46 posts against the thousands for these other things. And there are underage followers of these Instagram posts. So we are losing the social media war. We've got to have a coherent policy to protect children and young people. Among high school students in North America, e-cigarette use has risen from 1.5% in 2011 to 275 in 2019, a nearly 20-fold increase. Among middle school students, these are younger, increased from 0.6% to 10.5% in 2019. Dual use has risen as more than doubled in a year amongst 18 to 20 year old Americans. You can see here on this graph, any tobacco product in the solid lines, but look at the dotted, the dotted black line, e-cigarette use in high school. Very, very scary. Another graph, also scary, USA high school students. Look first at the gray line, that's cigarette use. And then look at the red line, e-cigarette use, going up and up and up. And I would point out that cigarette use declined before vaping took off. This is not the fact that vaping is protecting people from cigarettes, as the industry would have us believe. And note that as vaping has taken off, there's been no further decline in cigarette use. These things are not there to help you stop smoking. They are here to make you a nicotine addict. And these are some of the flavours. The FDA has declared youth vaping an ep epidemic. What are these flavors doing here? Are they really to help you stop smoking? The Surgeon General says we must do more to stem what I see as an epidemic of the use of e-cigarettes amongst teens and deeply disturbing trends that show no sign of abating. And most importantly, Scott Gottlieb said the FDA won't tolerate a whole generation becoming nicotine addicts. The question of whether jewels and e-cigarettes are a gateway to smoking is really not relevant to me. What is relevant to me is I do not want my children to be nicotine addicts. And e-cigarette manufacturers have been accused of deliberately targeting children and young people by the US FDA. And there is no question that they are. So we've got to have a coherent policy. The Federation of International Respiratory Societies, which includes the European Respiratory Society and eight other big international professional organizations have made the following recommendations. These products should be considered tobacco products and regulated as such, including for taxation. The sale of these products to children and young people must be prohibited and these bans must be enforced. They are not being enforced. It's very easy for, for children and young people to acquire these underage and they do. All forms of promotion must be regulated and all advertising in the media, including social media accessible to children and young people, should cease. Flavouring should be banned. Regular surveillance should be performed to better understand the scope and health threat of tobacco products to children and young people. So the take home message is save the children, save our children from these terrible products. Vaping is promulgated by the tobacco industry those pillars of rectitude and transparency, and it is totally unregulated. So, for example, you can see nearly 8,000 flavor labels available on websites 2013 to 2014. Three years later, it was more than double, and the numbers are going up. Nobody knows what is in these liquids. Acute vaping reactions are worse than those of tobacco. So how can we possibly be sure that chronic effects of vaping are less than those of tobacco? We just can't. 
It took vape decades for the long-term harm of tobacco to be detected. When will we know about vaping? The evidence that e-cigarettes are being marketed at children is overwhelming. Can you tell me a single biologically plausible model whereby vaping is a good thing to do? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. We were fooled by the tobacco industry over tobacco. Are we going to be fooled a second time by e-cigarettes? Thank you for listening. These are my grandchildren. These are the generation who need to be protected from these evil products. I leave you with a last thought, adapting a well-known saying. There are liars, there are damned liars, and there is the tobacco industry. Thank you.